Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yeah. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. Hi there. I am Nathan Simmons. I'm Dustin Goes to Hollywood. Reloaded. <laughs> and this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. And actually, you know what? I kind of had a, a, a mess up there, Nathan. It should be the Silver Linings Reloaded. Oh, Silver Linings Reloaded. Sure. <laughs> me, me, me. Yeah. So The Matrix Reloaded. Boy, where do, where to start? I mean, I guess we should start by saying you're not hearing a third voice you normally hear on the show, and that is Mally. And that's yeah. because uh, he was assimilated by Agent Smith. He, he got rebooted. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He, he's having his meeting with the architect as we speak. That's right. We'll see. He may not even be on the fun uh, the finale for the season because we may not get him back. Luckily, right now I'm surrounded by a thousand televisions of Mally screaming bullshit at me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That sounds like hell, but it also sounds like it's achievable. Like, that is something Mally would do. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> and then one is just going, I'm hungry. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. But you know what? It's okay. Don't fear, because we've had another uh, another person here join us inside the Matrix to talk about the Matrix. That's right. And <laughs> he's jacked in. It's none other than Mr. John Hauser himself. Let's give, let's give a round of applause to finally, 100 plus episodes, we're finally getting him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> We're all having a we're all having a lava rave right now. Hey, hey guys! I know kung fu. Oh, oh he said the thing. <laughs> <laughs> he did the thing for the movie. Man, John, the Matrix. There, there was we were talking earlier this season, and I'm showing you the the calendar for all the movies we were covering this this season. And you saw the Matrix, and you told me, I think quote was, "I have to be on that one." <laughs> uh, yeah, like I have to. <laughs> all right, like I I can't stress enough, like how much like I genuinely like actually love not even just Reloaded, but just the series like in a in a in a in a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like on some real level. Like I think when I saw this film, I was already in the like mindset of like, yeah, like filmmaking is fucking dope. <laughs> and it's just like <laughs> I think reloaded in itself for me, like from an imagination like kind of standpoint, it's uh -huh. just like it's all there. Mm -hmm. And this is the first film too, like for me, like when I was like Wiskowski brothers, well, the Wiskowskis mm -hmm. now and stuff like that. It's just like learning I don't know, this was I, I think this is just around the time where I was just understanding like all directors yeah. and like where their role is and stuff like that like when reloaded came out it was like a oh no this is a I, by that by that time i already knew this is a wiskowski film <laughs> so whatever the hell that meant for me during that age it was like this film is what i still call to this day it's a live action anime yeah yeah no it's it's surprising besides speed racer they never really got in like give them well, maybe this would be putting my foot in my mouth, but maybe give them a Dragon Ball Z thing to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but like, no, for real. Because it's like around this time, the Wiskowski is like the, the, the stranglehold that they had on cinema mm -hmm. yeah. during this time. It was like, oh, y'all want to do Speed Racer film? All right, go ahead. But then like they also had like, I don't know. Dustin and I were talking about this yeah. recently where it's it's like like the the like they came out of nowhere it felt mm -hmm. like they did bound and One then movie. convinced <laughs> uh Hollywood to to make to take the leap and make the Matrix and the Matrix it, like you cannot undersell what a fucking watershed moment mm -hmm. that movie is mm -hmm. in the way that people talk about Star Wars or Blade Runner. Yeah. You know, these movies that shaped genre filmmaking, the Matrix and the, and the Wachowskis are like there. Like right. that is, that's where it is. Right. Not even genre filmmaking, filmmaking in general, like sure. camera work. Like bullet time. Yeah. It, it, it's crazy. <laughs> and here's the thing. Do you do you think that they knew what they were like doing I mean, as they were in real time? I think so. Yes. Yeah. I like to believe that they, that they knew it was revolutionary. Do you think like the Wiskowski was like in their in their in their hotel room, like, yo, this shit is like crazy? <laughs> like <laughs> I, I think they were on so much cocaine yeah. when they made this thing. But more masculine. <laughs> 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 They had the hive mind to do what so many coke addicts fail to do, which is go back and read your work the next day when you're sober. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think, like, well, Nathan, you were talking about this with me off air uh, a couple days ago that mm -hmm. they had pretty much this whole movie storyboarded out. Yeah. From, like, well, the first Matrix. 
And like the fact that this movie had a hundred and fifty million dollar budget, like you had already changed the world with your first movie <laughs> with The Matrix, right? And where do you even go? Like, what do you do? After well, and that's the thing is, I I remember one of the big knocks against this this one in particular when it came out was that it went too big in terms of the the lore, like widening the world. And I actually think that that's kind of one of the things that I kind of love about. It's kind of one of the th- yeah. as I was rewatching it. Yeah, I feel like it was necessary for it because like you're touching. All right, the first measure is literally touched on the whole subject of like, are we in a real world right now? Like, mm-hmm. are we on like, is this all real? Are we really chatting right now? This is like, it's like when you, when you get into that, yeah. like you can't just like kind of give somebody like a, oh, this is just like a little taste of it. Like, mm-hmm. no, like expand on it. I want to see. Well, f- for me, yeah. the, the expansions that work is the stuff in the matrix. Like the, I like meeting all these other programs and all this stuff. The stuff that doesn't quite jive for me is the, you know, the giant hive city of thousands of people with their own bureaucracy well, and like which is like some of that kind of falls apart for me <laughs> this is where i disagree because okay. everything they do in this movie damn near they set up in the first one and they even mention in the first one they yeah do. they talk about zion yeah they talk about all this other stuff in the first movie they talk about the city of the machines and everything and i i kind of like the bureaucracy. it's not nearly as egregious as they do in like the star wars prequels sure. of like all the bureaucracy and stuff i think they do just enough okay there's even a part where um in the first matrix movie where neo gets interrogated by agent smith yeah mm-hmm. there's a quick like shot like the transitional shot of the architects like you know the multiple screens that he had mm-hmm. and there's like a shot of that of like the multiple screens and stuff like that and it like pushes in like on neo like in that scene in itself and then like i feel like that oh it's very meta yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like but then like they kind of follow through with that in the in this reloaded film here mm-hmm. yeah well, and we should also mention the reason we're doing this movie at this time is, of course, because I don't know if you guys have heard, but uh, <laughs> there's there may be another Matrix movie on the horizon. In mm-hmm. fact, <laughs> when this episode drops, I believe it'll be out this week. And I'm just now realizing I made su- I'm such a missed opportunity. I should have introduced John as Agent Smith. Ah! Damn. Fucking God damn it. Damn. God damn it. <laughs> My one time, y'all. <laughs> What's great is that we are, we are using our penultimate episode of the season to talk about the penultimate ultimate matrix film Mm -hmm. before much like the matrix we come back next season for a relaunch yeah and get rebooted (laughs) that's gonna happen also um this may be the first time someone's tuning into the show and we've already jumped the gun so much without even telling them what the show is so yeah jumped around the gun a 360 degree spin (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if this is your first time tuning into the silver linings playlist first of all welcome second of all we are a podcast that lots that likes to watch films such as The Matrix Reloaded that do not end in a happily ever after note. Uh, thing, and this movie, what a cliffhanger to end it on. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> but we'll get there when we get there. And what we'd like to do is um, try to come up with a silver lining for the characters by the time the credits roll. Something positive to take away from the movie. So it, things aren't so dour by the time the credits start rolling. And in this in this case, r- remind me, Nathan, who is, the, who is the needle drop for the credits for this one? Because it's not Rage Against the Machine again. Oh, no, it is, isn't it? Oh, was it? What you say? watch us say oh watch that's right that's like right. what song was that? yeah it's the song that si- sounds like rage starts off by going wachowski watch yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's very true all right all right so that's where we are we're, we're gonna try and talk our way through that's my last my last note is all caps wachowski wachowski <laughs> <laughs> we're we're gonna try and talk our way through so good. the matrix reloaded to try to find a silver lining for neo and all the other real world people by the end of it but mm-hmm. before we do that Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we've kind of already done it now, but who's who saw this in the theaters? I did. Me. Okay. I did not. I saw this. Yes. I I I remember. All right. So <laughs> I remember my specific like seeing this in the theater and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like I uh I saw this with my mom. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, I saw this with my folk. I saw this with my mom. My mom had no idea. She, was, I was just like, Matrix Reloaded. She was just like, uh, whatever. And like, my mom honestly did not care. God bless her. My mom, like, who we don't talk about, there needs to be just a film about, like, the the parents of a film lover. Oh, <laughs> the parents that yeah. don't give a shit? Yeah. They don't, they, don't, they don't get enough much love because mm-hmm. my mom, like, was there. My mom had no idea what the Matrix Reloaded was, and I was just like, yeah, I need, I need to see this, and blah, blah, blah. And then 
I remember watching this and I was just so enthralled with it. Yeah. My mom fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> One of the loudest movies ever. <laughs> no shit, right? <laughs> no, no. My mom fell full asleep, like mm. snoring and everything. But get, no, she woke up. She got like very like whenever uh tr- the scene. I don't I don't know if I'm. No, we're getting into it. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, we're okay, getting into but it. Like, yeah, like. The scene where like Trinity and Neo just like finds the opportunity. Well, the uh, they find the opportunity to just fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, everyone's gonna be here. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, <laughs> oh, that's what she woke up. That's what she was like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's like the only moment of any kind of sexuality in these these movies. <laughs> that was it. Was well until until the Mayor of Vengeance, yeah. the Mayor of Vengeance wife gets on screen. That's but, true. Yeah. We'll get there. <laughs> Dude, I did not remember. I We watched all three of these movies the past week. I did not remember how much of it's just like a Saints Row video game in that third movie when they go to his club. <laughs> There's guys walk around with just dildos strapped onto their fucking crotches and stuff. I'm like, I don't remember any of this shit. Man, I, I think I was too distracted by Monica Bellucci to, be, to even notice anything, to be, to be honest with you. Absolutely. Monica. Monica. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd like that, John. Monica. Little bit of Monica. Yeah. All right. Well, before we get even further into this this shit, because we're gonna be here all day. Yeah. Let's talk about the Matrix Reloaded, how much it cost, what it made, and all that good stuff. So the Matrix Reloaded comes out in 2003, which I believe is what four or five years after the original. Yeah, the originals. Originals 99. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then Revolutions was the next year or 2005? The Revolutions was three months after Oh, my this. God. Was it really? Yeah, yeah. I was about to say, it came out months out. Yeah, oh, it came out months right. later. They Back to the future it. Oh, my God. <laughs> it, it came out in on, on uh, November. Yeah. Do you think we'll ever see that again of like a, like a trilogy where you go to see the second one? They're like, by the way, the third one's here. <laughs> no, and we'll get into it. But like, that's the reason why I miss like current cinema like today. Mm. Because yeah. like, I like there's a... Uh, there's a the whole thing about that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, well, the directors are uh, the Wachowskis. Uh, the film stars Keanu Reeves. I can't pronounce this last name. Harold Perrineau, I think. Perrineau, yeah. Perrineau. Carrie Ann Moss, uh, Nona Gay, Flora Foster, Jada Pinkett Smith, <laughs> Harry Lennox, <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne, Hugo Weaving, and Monica Bellucci. I should say, I, I don't have a problem with Jada Pinkett Smith, the actor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a problem with Jada Pinkett Smith, the person, but yeah. that's, that's neither here nor there. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, the fact that you stopped, yeah. that was like, that was... <laughs> well, I, I, I have a very contentious relationship with her show <laughs> on Facebook, uh-huh. so I, that's it, that's for another, t- another time. For shizzle. Um, The budget was $150 million. It managed to grow $742 million worldwide. Currently sits at a 73% on Rotten Tomatoes hmm. and was nominated for a Razzie what? for the worst director, but guess what movie it lost to? You guys, if you can guess this, think about the. It's 2003. 2003. Mm-hmm. 2003. Dumb and Dumber. Oh, that's a good <laughs> one. At, at the Razzies, this movie and Revolutions were considered one film at the Razzies, and it no, lost that's dumb. to another film. Okay. So. When the Dukes of Hazard come out. Ooh, <laughs> a good one. That's a good one. Give me a lead actor. Give me a lead yeah, actor. Yeah, yeah. Let me see if I can do this. Oh, if I give you lead actor, you're going to get it. Yeah. I'm, no, no. Lead actor. Lead actor. I tell you what, you may not get it from lead actor because he had two bad movies back to back okay in affleck geely it was geely yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, all right yeah that sounds about right i was thinking daredevil was not long after that so. that sounds about right geely swept that year yeah <laughs> geely listener if you've never seen geely it's wild do yourself a favor <laughs> what it's like what if all the what if chasing amy had no heart <laughs> <laughs> What if what if Jennifer Lopez just I, I don't know what if what if she wasn't an act an actress and was just what if she wasn't an anaconda <laughs> like, <laughs> what if she wasn't but yeah that's that's uh the Matrix Reloaded's all the details now guys normally at this point we watch the trailer yeah right. but I don't know if you guys remember this this movie of course was a huge deal as was all these Matrix movies yeah do you guys remember uh when the movie came out the year this came out the MTV Movie Awards oh yeah. Yes. Did something very special yes. regarding the Matrix. Yes. Now, I watched this a lot, actually. Yes. <laughs> it's one of the funniest fucking things. All the yes. I think I've ever seen. I- I'm going to play it here. Uh-huh. I have not- we're not going to play the whole thing because it's like 15 minutes long. But I cut it down 
to my favorite parts. And it's listener, a shitload of stifflers. <laughs> it's a shitload of stuff. Uh, listener, if you haven't seen this, please just Google. Uh, I think it's 2003 MTV Music Awards. Yeah. Uh, or in Movie Awards. When the music, when the Movie Awards like really mattered. Oh, Sorry, yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the I think the last time they did something this good was when Batman Begins came out. Oh, I don't remember. If I saw that one. Yeah, he takes off his mask and he's a Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, this is uh. Justin Timberlake and um, Sean William Scott in The Matrix. Mm -hmm. The dream team. Yeah, no, for real. Uh, I'm just going to play this here. Listener, you can watch along if you want to, but I just, I got to revisit this one last time. <laughs> you must be the ones. Oh, cool. This is super. <laughs> Actually, I'm the key maker. Good on this actor as the key maker to want to do this. Well, he was the only one available out of the cast. Awesome, <laughs> What's happening, hot stuffs? <laughs> I think this part right here might be my favorite part of the entire thing. The sweat comes up. <laughs> Dude. Not not that, Where but this whole AD dick. I think, yeah, I think I thought about this while I was what watching the movie. <laughs> Duh, it's obviously an underground city and what the they do with Morpheus here, yeah. holy shit. Machines. Machines. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. all I think about. Like, I don't even I don't even hear oh the real God, speech anymore. I still keep that, like, like I still oh, have I that. I still, now. like, quote that shit. <laughs> He's having a huge orgy at his place later tonight. At least that's what many of us have heard. It is true. What many of you have heard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Morpheus! What, what can, can we, we expect at this orgy? orgy? Machines! <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm out. It's, it's so out good. Team. That's so good. What happened to uh, Justin Timberlake's movie career? He had a thing going on. He did a, a thing. Yeah. She starts to fall. <laughs> I don't know. Now that's fucked up. <laughs> oh, damn it, Wanda sucks. <laughs> Wanda! I'm so sorry to interrupt you guys, but I'm really lost. Wait a minute. You're that boy from NC. What happened to your Jerry curl? <laughs> <laughs> that was hot. You know them boys, right? I've never heard of them. You never heard of NC? No. No. <laughs> Shouts out to this editor, man. Yes. This is great. Yes. Mr. Timberlake. Mr. This was William way past Scott. TikTok, uh -huh. way past guy, like like all of this stuff. <laughs> Ooh, you hitting the spot. You'll like being a dude. <laughs> I do. <laughs> that is a shitload of stifflers. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> See. That's what we're missing now. We don't get stuff like this anymore. Nah, no. None of this happens anymore. And like Sean Pyle. <laughs> oh, the wet, the wet. The wet <laughs> Mr. Timberlake. The wet Willie had me like dying laughing. Yeah, no, no actors want to do shit like this. They anymore. don't do this anymore. The closest thing I remember seeing that was that was good like this was I think it's Uber Eats. Oh yeah. That Nas and Elton John did, or uh, not Nas, Lil Nas X and Elton John. That was really fucking funny. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. yeah all right. See that those computer screens right there? Yeah, yeah. That's in the first movie. Oh, was it? I yes. don't remember that. It's a it's a very like quick like uh three second shot or something like that. It's it's of those screens there. Hello. I've been waiting for you three. Who are you? Yeah. Who are you? I am. Why doesn't Will Ferrell go out for the role of Colonel Sanders? Like, if Reba McIntyre can do it, right? Will Ferrell can do it. Will Ferrell can do a lot of stuff. He, I feel like he was pigeonholed and like he just gave him everything. <laughs> well, they gave him just like they tried to give him all the like comedy and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Will Ferrell is very much is like able to do uh, drama. Oh yeah, Everything Must Go is a great movie. The MTV movie. Well, speaking of which, he's got a new dramatic show coming out too on Apple. The programming of the Matrix. Originally, Neo was the chosen one to host the show, but hosting is a full-time commitment, and he's been a little distracted lately. Trinity. See what I'm talking about? <laughs> That's why I brought in Sean and Justin, because you, my friend, are completely pussy-whipped. Oh! <laughs> you haven't answered the question. Yes, I did. You see, what You I haven't mean? answered my I'm trying. You just need to let me talk. You won't let it happen. No, you won't let it! <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk! Ears open. You 
have an answer. You do not want to see me get out of this chair. Ergo, open your yap. Ergo. 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 A world of pain all over, over your, your candy, candy ass. ass. Ergo. Ergo. Feet on feet. Concordantly. Concordantly. <laughs> there are two doors. The door on your left leads sissy boy here back to his bitch. <laughs> uh-huh. What up, G? You can handle it. The door on your right leads you to the 2003 MTV Movie Awards. That's when the crowd goes crazy. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Lair. Go host the shit out of that show. I love the Beans. squeaks. Yep, of his little suit. <laughs> if I were you. Bite your tongue. <coughs> Bite it. I would hope that we don't meet again. Why'd you say that? I told you to shut up. I told you to shut up! <laughs> Bravo. So good. Bravo. That was, it's, it still holds up for me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. Now's the real, the real moment of truth. Does the trailer hold up? Yes. <laughs> the trailer does hold up. Preemptive yes. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Boom. Oh, we should have taken a tab on white, of white flashes, Nathan. Right. Oh, it's gonna be all over this bit. Five so far. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Connect in. Boom. I love that. <laughs> I know this whole thing. Oh no. Yeah. yeah. Boom. <laughs> How you fellas? How you fellas? It's him. Do we proceed? Yes. He is still only human. <laughs> Oof, this music choice. Our lives. We have fought this war. That the shot is incredible. It is. Bill Pope. I know, Bill Pope. Well, I gotta, we gotta talk about Bill Pope later, because he's got some thoughts on this movie. Oh, is it the, the Kubrick yes. Yes. quote? Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so good. I, always found a way to copy himself. I have thoughts just about the IMDb trivia page in general. One, 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 one. He gets onto the ball. He just busts everyone up. Man. Come on. I, I want to go watch the movie now. I know. Yes. Like, can we stop recording and just go watch Let's it? Let's go. <laughs> we should have done a group watch for this. Digging. They're boring from the surface straight down to Zion. There is only one way to save our city. Bam. Machines. <laughs> Neo. Oh. <laughs> How long did it take you guys to realize uh, that Neo was an anagram of just what happens one? <laughs> Took me a while. I I wish that there was just a title card in this trailer that said, "Make sure you play Enter the Matrix yes. and watch the Animatrix first." Enter the Matrix is so fucking fun. No, no, I used to like obsess about this trailer. It's great. I watched this. I used to obsess about this trailer, but um, man, the trailer just like meant so much. It's it's good. Like yes. No front. It's good. Dying for. Ooh. We got to the point where it was like, yo, Neo is flying at this yeah. point. Like, yes. Yeah. The, all the TV spots ended with that shot, but it had it had the, the clip of Harold Perrineau uh, saying uh, he's doing his Superman thing. Again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, we're already well into the episode by yeah. now, but uh, let's start, right? I love an immediate title card. Mm -hmm. We got we went from the Bugs Bunny behind the WB logo last <laughs> last episode to now yeah. we get the, the glitchy world one. I miss stylized logos, man. I know people don't like them sometimes. I dig it. What do you mean you say stylized? You mean like... Well, like the Harry Potter ones get darker as they yeah, go along. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then like sometimes they'll do something cheeky like the X-Men one they put the big X on it. Yeah. When I saw Batman Forever in the theater and it morphed into the bat symbol, I, like seven-year-old me lost his mind. <laughs> I like the very subtle one. You, you mentioned Batman man but i'm like the very subtle uh one where it was like uh the one with bane batman dark knight rises yeah rises where it like makes the like ice mm -hmm. crossing of like just like whatever batman signal signal it was like yeah. it, i like that kind of stuff. yeah yeah 
or the ring was really good where it shows the moon and then there's a subliminal message of the ring mm -hmm. in the ship. Or one of my favorites of recent was uh, Happy Death Day. Restarting the Universal bumper at the beginning is really oh, fun. Yeah. But yeah, I miss, I miss the stylized ones. We don't really get them too, too often. I mean, now it's yeah. usually silent. <laughs> I, I, I miss when they used to do it just in general. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I don't know what it is about it, but it's just like, I, I like whenever, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just like when they, when they, when they play with the... Yeah, me too. Yeah. All these Matrix movies do this, but there is something so comforting to see in those falling green characters. Like, mm -hmm. it's such an inviting... And then they do it. Like, they push in, and, you know, you get the digital CG stuff here, but it, it does feel like it's literally pulling you into the world of the Matrix, and it's, yeah. it's comforting, for sure, to go back through it. Yeah. And, man... The score that kicks in, yes. right at the, like you got to top, you got to top what you did in the last movie, right? The opening scene with Trinity, and I think they, I, they damn near do it again with this. Yeah, the motorcycle landing into this this little security hut yeah. is <laughs> phenomenal. It's fucking incredible. It is, but it, it this movie does a thing that like the first one did a lot too, where there are multiple times where the heroes uh, murder regular people yep. doing their jobs. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, they were just getting off work. Yeah. This guy is like trying to take a nap at work and she drops a motorcycle on his head. Well, that's what you get for sleeping on company time. I don't know what to hey, tell you, man. I, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. That's capitalism for you. No, but... Uh, <laughs> Don Davis's score is excellent. Oh my yes. God. Absolutely. It's, that was one of the things I had in my notes was just the fact that like the music, like mm -hmm. if any, if there's anything that like, I hope that they on this new Matrix film that that's coming out, like mm -hmm. I want the music, mm -hmm. like the music and the green color palette and yeah. stuff like that. Like these movies are like very specific. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. It's full on aesthetic hours. Yeah. Like, yeah. like if, if nothing else, the matrix is all style. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, there is substance there for sure, but it's style first, I think. But this was like, that was the interesting thing about these movies is that people who get really into dissecting allegory and metaphor love these movies, could have interesting conversations about them. And also the dumbest person you'll ever meet also loves these movies yeah. because they look cool. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like we were just talking about, I, I, I took me forever to realize that Neo was just the word one. Oh, I'm, I'm an idiot. I'm, I'm including myself in that experience equation <laughs> <laughs> and then i mean the christ allegory especially in the third movie it should sure. not be any more apparent um, oh for sure well the problem with this movie is you have a perfect movie with your first outing mm -hmm. like it's undeniable you changed cinema like yeah there's like a handful of movies that get that honor of like you change things for sure jaws Star Wars, uh, Trip to the Moon, like mm -hmm. the jazz singer, like it's all these specific moments in cinema history. And this, and the Matrix changed it. I mean, Agent Smith is basically the train coming right at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> that freeway chase scene is just all trains just coming right at the screen. Oh my god! But it's like, like, but like, how do you handle it? That's your your first film literally changed cinema uh -huh. like for what it is in terms of like action and stuff like that so it's just like it, it's an impossible standard i uh i i take that to the equivalent of and i'm just going to use this just for an example but like we got this new spider-man movie coming out yeah. and it's mm -hmm. just like we got like you know legacy characters and stuff like that and that like how do you like balance that and we got a new Matrix film and stuff like that. Like, I mean, they managed to do it with Avengers, so I'm, I don't know. I mean, I think we're getting a little bit better at it about balancing all that different stuff. I mean, my whole point is this movie gets ridiculed a lot for not being as good as the first one. It it's has. in the revolution, so it like has. these are like letdowns compared to the first. But on reevaluating it, I think this movie is not. I mean, it's not equal to right but i think it is worthy enough to stand alongside the original just like dr sleep and the shining yeah well and it's trying to do something very different yes exactly i feel like it's very similar to like dr sleep and the shining they're both incredible movies on their own right and mm -hmm. i think this movie they do not let up i feel like the third one they kind of give up a lot on some of the more stylized shots and stuff but like yeah. trinity dropping this motorcycle on this security hut and then like the freeway chase and everything like the fight with neo and the, on the staircase with all those people like yeah they didn't s slack off on their vision at all this movie looks incredible no it looks incredible yeah. i i think where the where the plot kind of falls apart for me is that it really does feel like an extended fetch quest for a lot of it like you 
you have to go meet this guy and then you have to get to this conversation that is essentially the plot of the movie well and i think my biggest gripe is it's too much of the zion stuff and not enough on neo but i agree yeah but at the same time it's like what do you do he's so much less of a character in this movie than he is in the first one well they try to expand it they try to do the whole like oh well like uh at a certain point in the future like yeah the the matrix was a perfect world and Mm -hmm. like um well uh that wasn't just enough for like humans and stuff like that so we tried to do this thing and they tried to like they tried to like talk about that in the animatrix yeah. and in in a lot of those like uh spinoffs and stuff like right. that and i think what i am mostly all right if, if we're gonna be just like like in all about in terms of just the matrix series in itself it's just like the onslaught of films that came after it like so many parodies and yeah you remember the the one with uh jet Lee? Lee? yeah yeah well hold on first of all the ending of that movie is perfect so if you're gonna <laughs> talk any shit about jet Li's the one oh i was not going <laughs> to talk shit <laughs> okay, okay. Was, just, just to be safe i only came here to be like hey i was one of those people that was like bring the party to the floor like oh yeah that- no that movie's terrible though by the way just so everyone <laughs> <laughs> is it though <laughs> just- but yeah no th- this movie's so suffered its its own like it, it suffocated under its own weight because not only did this movie come out but you had the animatrix you had the gamecube games into the matrix and stuff and then you also had that online game that i don't know if it ever even hit the ground running but it was like it was one of the first times of trying to do like infinitely generated video games yeah. like you can go throughout this entire city and every building is explorable every room is unlocked and i don't know if it ever even happened when that game that game actually ended uh like when they shut down the servers for it they did like a big event where like everyone converged in one spot and the world was destroyed so oh, they cool. literally were like we're killing all your characters come party oh so it's like if the matrix if it had actually been shut down the machines won yeah, yeah. machines <laughs> yeah machi- i can't get the machines i might have to add that to the soundboard <laughs> <laughs> but i feel like this movie just can't be ignored like no. it's too big it cannot no it's it's the, the we'll get to the but the freeway chase scene alone is it, it's just as good as the first movies like all of its pioneering stuff too and you won't get nothing like all right, we won't get this again ever all right so nothing i was listening to you guys like a uh, podcast about spider-man mm-hmm. and like everything that ever that y'all was saying about spider-man is it's like was correct it's like <laughs> oh, thank you no, 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 no. <laughs> but it's like even like with this film like here it's like a lot of cgi is used but it wasn't like as a back like bone is like right. how they use it like nowadays it's yeah. like it was used to enhance certain things like this stuff like this entire like scene and stuff like that like it's it's just full on just just well i mean the the burly brawl there's only like four full cg shots in that fight and the rest of it is like practical effects with cg you know yeah eating it it wasn't just it wasn't just full you know whole cloth which i, I love once you start doing cg characters like completely completely fabricated things out out of existence like that's when you start to use it as a crutch and not as you said that happens in the new resident evil movie right well (laughs) well that's an episode for another time but (laughs) what one thing i am worried about with this new matrix movie is that just based off the marketing of it alone and everything right i'm worried that they've lost sight of how revolutionary these movies can be and Mm -hmm. it's just something they're falling back into comfort wise like sure I don't think they're going to push the envelope as much as people are expecting them to out of mm. a new Matrix film that's coming out, you know, 20 years later. Well, there's that there's that new clip that dropped during the Game Awards where they're literally talking about nostalgia, using nostalgia as a tool. Yeah. And, I, and I'm just like, it feels very, very meta, but also possibly a warning. <laughs> no, I mean, it is. It, I mean, the trailers alone gave it away that it's meta. I feel the same way about like the the spider-man movies Mm -hmm. that's coming out i'm like hey guys but what if toby mcguire and andrew garfield what if like honestly what if they what if they're not in the movie movie? yeah (laughs) yeah what if really they're not in the movie 
It's like, what are you going to do? I'm fine with that. I, I mean, here's what's legitimately going to happen if they're not in the movie. You're going to get all these Marvel nerds with their panties in a bunch, and they're going to, mm-hmm. well, maybe that's a derivative thing to say. They're going to get very upset, no, and it's going it. to be <laughs> the Sonic redesign all over again. You have to change this. Petitions. We're going to redo it. We we demand the Toby cut. Yes. <laughs> the Toby cut. I can't fucking, I cannot fucking stand movie fans anymore like that. Like, I can't. I can't get on board. Mm-hmm. Entitled fans. N- no one owes you a different movie. <laughs> Release the Snyder Cut. No. Fuck you. No. <laughs> I wish HBO would have said that. No. We're not doing it. Suck my ass. Suck my ass. We're HBO. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's their new motto, by the way. It's not It's not cable. It's suck our ass. We're HBO. <laughs> Let's move on from the the Trinity opening scene and talk about the next opening scene. Yeah, where everyone is meeting in the Matrix. And guys, I gotta I gotta say something might be a little controversial here. Um, <laughs> not everyone needs fucking sunglasses. I have <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's sunglass hut in the Matrix must be like the new Apple or Google <laughs> of of the Matrix world. I want y'all to do something the next time you watch this meeting scene and then the one later on in in Morpheus's uh, red chair room. Mm-hmm. No one's looking at each other. No. Everyone is posed. <laughs> They're all standing in a line or like in a half moon with sunglasses on staring straight ahead. And when they come in and someone makes a note about like, oh, y- y'all are late. Yeah. Like, how do you know? Yeah. You, wouldn't, you didn't even look at him when he came in. <laughs> do you? Do you think the actors in this scene were like, I can wear these sunglasses uh-huh. and I can take a little quick nap yeah. and no one's going to know. <laughs> they can ADR me later. L- like the people that aren't speaking, that's what I would do. Oh, like, yeah. I'm in this suit. It's uncomfortable, but I'm standing here. I got sunglasses on. Why don't you close my eyes for a few little minutes? <laughs> Catch a little winks, you know. Maybe you know when you see those people in the club with sunglasses on. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe they're on to something. Mm. Maybe they're on to something that we don't. Know. We should follow those white rabbits, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy in the Ed Hardy shirt. Is like, <laughs> he's 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 plugged in, man. We know. Yeah. Okay. I love the fight that happens right after this, and there's a there's a little quirk that the agents have in the scene. Every time they jump up into the air, they kick their legs like Luigi to go a little higher. <laughs> you know, did you well, notice that? I, I was going to say, Agent Smith in this movie, especially in this scene, is so much... He is a scamp. He is the scamp of the movie. Thank you. <laughs> We've got to put it out there because he's so cheeky with this fucking earpiece. Mm-hmm. Why does he do this? Why did he... <laughs> You have the element of surprise, and you you ruin it by like thinking of you, yeah, Mister Anderson. Oh, take it. I mean, I don't know if it's this movie or the Revolutions that's worse, but take a drink every time you hear Mister Anderson come out of Hugo Weaving's mouth. Oh God, I was gonna <laughs> say like in the first Matrix movie, take a drink every time someone goes. I can see it in you, Neo, mm-hmm. like, or something like <laughs> kind of like every time Morpheus says destiny yeah. destiny yeah <laughs> i believe well th- as good as the score is in this movie mm-hmm. this scene with neo fighting the agents is not because this <laughs> score <laughs> this techno beat i love the score it's so, this techno song is so bad <laughs> i love it man it dude it like so right. immediately. no it does not no <laughs> It I'm gonna break you at some point, John. We're gonna find something in this movie. No, you can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this to me. No. John, what no. if I told you not everything in this movie is great? <laughs> uh. Yo, you can't. You can't though. Actually, I right, I'll tell you why. Like this movie is like the when you talk about make sure it's like reloaded. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. Like <laughs> That's the that's the pull quote they put on the box art. Just come on. <laughs> when you talk about Matrix Reloaded, like come, come on. on. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, here, actually, this note, this note right here is for you, John, uh, because I've never believed in anything the way that Morpheus believes in Neo. Yeah. And oh, he believed in him so hard. Like, I think that's you with this movie. Yeah. Like you believe yes. in this movie more than anything. <laughs> this movie is so good. It's I roll your eyes in the back of your head. That's how that's how good it is. Like, that's so good. <laughs> well, is it is it as good as Link in this movie? Because dude, him with the first thing he says when he comes back from war. Where's my pussy? Yes! <laughs> I completely forgot about this line. <laughs> it's so good. I have it in my nose. It's what, in my nose. What, what a fucking G. 
Holy shit. Cause like you were like <laughs> I'm not gonna say it yet, but like it was like one one of my questions was about if I could be anybody. <laughs> I fell out. That was the first thing, yeah. y'all. That was the first thing he said. <laughs> he did, he had kids. Not baby, I'm home. Yeah. Not I survived. <laughs> he had he has children. Oh, he's about to make a third. We're right. We know what's going to happen. <laughs> the first thing he walked in, where is mine? Mine. Where is it? Where's my pussy? <laughs> he he came in. He might as well came in with binoculars. Like he came he was like, where is, you know, where is mine? That's mine. You know what it makes me think of? It makes me think of Pootie Tang with the milk outside the door. Like, oh! <laughs> well, to me, it's like, this has got to be like a thing that they say to each other, right? Yeah, that's, like, <laughs> that's his call card when he comes home from active duty yeah that's what black fa that's what us yeah uh, that's what uh because otherwise that's insane that is an insane thing to say to your wife after you've been out at war yes <laughs> imagine matt david coming back home from saving private ryan <laughs> and the first thing he says when he walks in the door to his house is where's my pussy <laughs> where's my it's the my that's really tripping you up john imagine otto octavius coming in with his tentacles and shit <laughs> Where's my... <laughs> uh, and, and, and Gina Torres' reaction is so good. There's not mm -hmm. enough of her in this movie. <laughs> She's so good. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that, that blew my mind. Oh. This whole reintroduction, or this whole introduction to Zion's really good. Mm -hmm. it, it, the stuff that kind of bugs me is like, I feel like this was the first movie I really saw that really tried to shove connected universe in my face, mm -hmm. where it was like, oh, we, we all talk in generalities about the kid, but y'all gotta watch the Animatrix if you want to know what's going on here yeah okay. and most of niobe's scenes are like that too where i'm just like oh well what where did you come from yeah well you gotta play the video game to know what she was up to into the matrix i yeah. played the fuck out of that and was, then yes and then like to see those because in the in the game you get scenes from the movie and uh -huh. he's like oh that's what niobe was doing this whole time and mm -hmm. like they had in a whole adventure too mm -hmm. like, yeah I remember that blowing my little 13 year old mind being like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, I was that guy. Enter the Matrix. Oh, by the way, I'm watching this movie as we speak. And I, oh, see, nice. <laughs> I see, oh, buddy from Saw. Lee oh, Winnell. Lee yeah. Lee Winnell. Oh, yeah. my God. Yes. I, my jaw dropped. And I yes. was like, get the fuck out That's of here. him. That's him. <laughs> and his death is like something out of a Saw movie. Oh, like, my God. Yes. Sequence. It's, you don't get a whole lot of blood in this movie, but no. that, holy shit. No, that blew my mind. <laughs> the Rube Goldberg device that kills everyone on that ship. Yeah, yeah. playing the game, I, I spent like 30 minutes just doing the little hacking mini game to get the sword that I never could use in the game. Right. <laughs> like, I played that game religiously. Yeah. Like, I played that game like like So much. I didn't play, Um, it was, Enter the Matrix came out first, and then it was the Neo one. The Path of Neo. I didn't play that one. I never played Neo. Path of Neo has the most buck wild ending of any video game oh yeah yeah it d do you know how this how path of neo no but I i'm tempted to, to tell you not to tell me because now i want to play it but okay you know what go ahead go ahead, go ahead. it's you, an old no, game are you sure yeah yeah it's an old game go ahead okay so it gets to the it follows the story of the trilogy and then it gets to the last fight with smith and Smith pulls the whole city together into a giant mecha Smith. Of course. Yeah, that seems about right. <laughs> and then you fight it, blow it up, and the credits roll over Queen's We Are the Champions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making any of that shit up. Oh, that, that, I mean, the Wachowskis in their needle drop moments. It's, yeah, I get, I believe that 100%. Guys, <laughs> we got Carrie. And Moss. Mm -hmm. I love her. Mm -hmm. uh, she's so great. Still looking gorgeous, by the way. She is she is beautiful. Like yes. golden. Yes. Yeah. I think I if I had maybe seen The Matrix before I saw Batman Returns, mm. I think Carrie and Moss be my my Michelle Pfeiffer, like the one that, that triggered it for me. Sure. <laughs> so Morpheus, the level of celebrity Morpheus has, when he comes out uh, out to this crowd, <laughs> I just just yeah. just once in my life, I want to come out to a crowd cheering me on the way Morpheus gets it here because what a warm welcome to come home to in this shithole fucking city. <laughs> when Anthony Zerby introduces him, he might as well be like introduced, like ladies and gentlemen, musical guest. <laughs> yeah, like the way that they, and this is coming from somebody that's like. When the Matrix Reloaded came out, I was like so full on board. I was like, I don't care like what 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 kind of storyline you give me. Like, mm -hmm. I want more Matrix movies and something like that. But the, like the way that they like introduce like Morpheus, like in the first film, 
they kind of introduce him as like you know this like tour de force like yeah. oh like this this is the this is a uh, he, he's like a, like a Jim Jones or like a cult leader like he's mythical yeah like he's like he's like the head honcho mm-hmm. and then like whenever you meet him granted like the first Matrix movie like they give him like that kind of like that it factor of like oh no this is morpheus mm-hmm. this is morpheus like this is the guy yeah and then like they go on to the sequel with reload it and it's just like oh actually no morpheus actually uh he's much more middle management yeah <laughs> it's like like oh well he's actually like he's actually held on by this captain and like this captain's giving him shit and- he's almost like like a like a crazy person yeah, to some of these people. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. <laughs> he's like, this dude just keeps shouting out about prophecies. Calm it down, Morpheus. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's what I gotta, like, honestly, there are so many times in this movie where I'm on Locke's side. Yeah. Even though, like, even though I know as the viewer that uh, Neo is the one that he can do all this stuff, mm-hmm. if I'm Locke, if I'm in his shoes and I'm trying to uh, organize a defense perimeter so that all of my friends don't die. Yeah. And this council is looking at me and saying, well, hang on, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like this magic man that Morpheus has. We got to factor in that Jesus may come help us. <laughs> I, I would be, I would also be furious. Like yeah. when he's mad about them saying like, send two ships. And then my girlfriend says, yeah, I'm going to go look for the magic guy. With my ex-boyfriend. With yeah. my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. Because some things don't change. Mm-hmm. I had an entanglement with Morpheus. Oh my god, my last um, <laughs> note about, about this whole scene is, you know Zion's gotta smell fucking awful. Awful. Oh. Just terrible. The smell oh. from this party scene has gotta be like, you me- do you guys remember that photo? It was, <laughs> not to pick on this couple, but it was, a, it was a couple, it was a white guy with dreads and a white girl, and it was somebody coming on itself, like, you know their, sme- their sex smells like Axe body spray and dog shit. I'm like, that's probably what that's what Zion's got to smell like. <laughs> Man, it's got to be pungent. Oh yeah. my god. Oh, speaking of um, something being in the air. Speaking of that, the next scene, you know, is is Anakin having the vision of Padme dying during childbirth. Oh wait, oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I miss. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's Neo seeing uh, Trinity die. There was something in the aughts sure. of protagonists having visions of their loved ones dying. Yeah, like his attack of the clones did come out too, and it's like, what, 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 what are we doing this in my <laughs> notes here what i put what i wrote down bill pope yeah mm-hmm. bill pope is like uh the cinematographer for this film he's great he is fantastic mm-hmm. one of the things that i'm a little um kind of spectacle about is is the fact that like this next uh mixtures movie mm-hmm. he's not he's not behind the camera on that and it's just like and i feel like what worked about these movies because he was there for like all three of them right yeah and i'm very much like open to you know just anyone to give their interpretation and stuff like that but like i feel like bill pope has such a very like stylistic style about like the way he i don't know no I've, i get you well uh, we're going to talk about Bill Pope towards the end okay. because, uh, yeah, the reason he's not returning is, is... I didn't know if I was going to... No, 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 I get you. But his absence, Hugo Weaving's absence, Lawrence Fishburne's absence, oh, there's, yeah. there's so much... John Davis isn't doing the music. I for... know. Yeah. There's there's so much that I'm like, I don't know, man. I am I worry. So we'll we'll see. In The Matrix 3? In this new one or... In the new one, in, in Resurrections. Okay. Uh, there's so much missing, so many missing vital elements, yeah. but we'll see. Okay. Well, yeah, this is the perfect like conversation because, like, like I said, like these movies, like they're so important. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Speaking of important, um, there's a quote here that is pretty important because I think it may be Morpheus that says this, but it says, "You do not truly know someone until you fight them." And I'm like, guys, square up because I guess I've never met. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> Sarah says that. I guess I've never. I don't know you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I, I gotta fight Mally one on one and be in the raid be in the raid and square up because I yeah <laughs> Dustin versus the matchbreaker. Uh. Um and then we get to the scene with Oracle and man rest in peace to Gloria Foster because yeah. she's so good what a powerhouse performance yeah. yeah and nothing nothing to take away from the woman that replaces her I can't remember the actress's name but in in Revolutions right. but yeah she passed away but she still did great yeah uh, phenomenal, great. phenomenal yeah but gloria foster has got such a warm nature to her that mm-hmm. it's it's so comforting it's so inviting mm-hmm. i i ugh. i like the uh i like the little visual gag that she's eating candy that looks exactly like a red pill mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
I, I, I just how cheeky she is too in all these movies. She's making cookies. Mm -hmm. She's she's doing the candy thing. She's like, don't worry about that vase. What vase? Oh, the one that you just broke. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> she knew he'd want to sit. Mm -hmm. I also I remember this blowing my mind back when I saw the movie, and again on the rewatch, I love the concept of every legend you've ever heard is a result of the Matrix glitching. Ghosts, I like it. vampires, werewolves. Yep. Like that's fucking cool. Yep. They have to kill a program with silver bullets later on. They do that with the deja vu stuff. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I and I didn't I didn't even catch the whole like werewolves and like mm -hmm. that whole like uh I didn't catch all of that initially and stuff. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of uh not catching stuff, you, you guys may not notice, but there's a third director attached to this movie. Oh uh, that directs one scene, uh, and it's John Woo because oh. it's entrance of Agent Smith on this basketball court. It's one hundred percent a John oh Woo reference, God. right? Yeah. yeah. It's the, the, the birds scattering and, and him walking out in slow mo. This is John Woo's the kids. That's hard boiled <laughs> as fuck. Yeah. Uh, it is <laughs> Dude, it is, I, I told you, it is the most an live action anime. Yeah. <laughs> it is such a fucking anime. Yeah. Oh my god, I didn't, I, I, I didn't even catch that until you said that. Yeah, this whole fight in the courtyard is an anime fight. It is such an anime. How, how do you, how do you feel about this fight, Nathan? Like, does it hold up for you? Mostly, okay. I think there's some rubber, there's some rubbery bits, there's and there's rubbery a, parts for sure. There's a couple of parts that I think go on a little too long. Yes. Like, I think uh, as much as I love the gag of him you know running along them while he's got the pole in the ground yeah it goes on maybe 10 seconds too long <laughs> um, yeah and i think some of the sound some of the sound effects are a little too cheeky dude the bowling pins yes. oh. what the fuck <laughs> what? i mean they do great great moments i mean it's they might as well have done the pinball like tilt like they did in freddy versus jason with this part too <laughs> but th there's moments in this that are great like when he rips out the rebar mm. i feel the impact when he hits that one agent and just goes flying like a baseball like oh man the shot where he he like it's in the trailer when he hits one of them and then bounces it off the ground and into another one's chest mm -hmm. rules i love all that shit oh the pole yeah the pole yeah, yeah. Yeah, when he like kicks it off and stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I agree though. I feel like it is is a little too long, and I do feel like some of the characters are a little too rubbery. I mean, that's just the limitations of the CG at the time. But yeah, the choreography is so good though. I think. Oh no, yeah, that's why it's it's kind of frustrating because there's a lot of parts like this in this movie where like the stunt work is great, mm -hmm. choreography is great, the cinematography is great, but there's just some elements that just don't hold up. And I guess I mean it's a 20 year old movie almost at this point. I think yeah, I think for when it came out, it holds up astonishingly well. I mean, it was it was kind of I'm like a my mind in 2003 oh yeah I'm, so like, like i'm picturing myself there yeah like, like yeah the second like i saw it in the theaters i'm watching a video game on the big screen basically like oh <laughs> like, oh hold on like even then it's like let's let's keep in mind like the onslaught of films that came out like after it like mm -hmm. what was it the jet lee's the one mm -hmm. <laughs> y'all remember that yeah <laughs> Uh -huh. It was like that shit is like that. All of that kind of stuff. Yeah, they really tried to capitalize on this stuff. I mean, yeah. Space Jam 2 had Matrix fucking references in it. And oh, that's yeah. 20 years later. Yeah. The target <laughs> audience. There's been two generations of your target yeah. audience since that movie came out. <laughs> My my favorite thing about these scenes, anytime there's an action sequence in the Matrix movies, uh, it, it look, like when it cuts back to Link and Trinity watching the screen mm -hmm. while he's fighting, and Trinity's like, "Get him out of there!" Mm -hmm. And it's just like, "What? It, what are you seeing on the screen that shows oh, you code. what's happening?" That's a cool little like thing though that I've always loved about the Matrix is that if you know it's just the code, if you know how to read the code, yeah, if you know how to read the code, you can see it. Yeah, and I I like that element of it because. To, a, to the layman, it's just nonsense. It's just fucking... And well, in reality, it's just a sushi recipe. <laughs> is that true? That is true, yeah. The, the green characters that are falling from the... It's just a sushi recipe. That's all it that's, is. I want to I eat the Matrix sushi. Like, that sounds great. <laughs> you hear that? He was like, eat the, eat the Matrix. I think that's what Link was trying to do when he got back from war. <laughs> Where's my sushi? <laughs> Agent Smith says me too right here. I thought that was kind of nice. Um, hashtag me too. <laughs> me, me, me. He also says... Uh, He's inevitable. And I'm like, I wonder if uh, the Russo brothers. Yeah, take a shot every time like uh, <laughs> that goes on. It's, it's inevitable. Yeah. It is inevitable. I'm like, oh, Thanos is uh, here. But I, I do love 
Hugo Weaving, like that Smith is so delighted by his own coolness. Like mm-hmm. every single time, he never gets tired of being able to copy himself. It's so funny to me. Oh, and he's always got to make a little joke, right? Like, Next snap or something. Oh, yeah. I'm now I'm seeing double. <laughs> the way the scene ends is so good because it's so anticlimactic. Neo just flies away, and the, and then the agents are just like, huh? Yeah, mm. and they just like <laughs> they just walk yeah. away. When they're just looking at each other like, oh, I, I guess. Uh, all right, I guess we're out. Yeah. TGI Fridays, it is. <laughs> do you, uh, who do you think has more one-liners like that, Agent Smith or uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze? Mr. Freeze, Link. Oh, oh, oh Mr. <laughs> Mr. Freeze, Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze, you think so? Okay. Mr. Freeze, yeah. Because I mean, the, the, it's a narrow, thin line. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age. Like, yeah, no, like, yeah. <laughs> Then they have this Lord of the Rings ass meeting mm-hmm. that was pretty great, and then we get introduced, introduced to we get we kind of get the plot like the Merovingian and the key the key master or key maker I, key maker I, the Ghostbusters is leaking it is leaking into the gatekeeper <laughs> the Merovingian as a name sounds so fucking cool yeah what's your son's name Merovingian yeah that's, that's... <laughs> the guy hands it up so well but I love it yeah it's so fucking it's good it's like wiping your ass with silk I love it yes. he is perfect. <laughs> Perfect. He he manages to, to spit out dialogue effortlessly, yeah. such as "I drink too much wine. I must take a piss." Cause and effect. Cause and effect. Yeah. I'm like, this is incredible dialogue. I mu- he says, "I must now. I must take a piece." Yeah. This movie costs 150 million dollars. <laughs> Do you know he he screen tested for? He was almost James Bond. Ooh. I, he screen tested for... He could be a Bond villain. The Living Daylights. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I don't know about uh, Bond himself, but he could definitely be a villain. I could see that. Yeah. He got he got beat out by uh, Dalton. Yeah. Lambert Wilson is this guy's name. Also known as the Frenchman. Such a... He makes me instantly hate this guy, which yes. means he's, he's doing his job right. Oh, like, yeah. And then, of course, Monica Bellucci. I mean, what do you say? Holy... Holy shit. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh. And great in this movie. So uh, good. Like, so, so, like, melancholy and and kind of, like, uh, you know, there's, like, an arsenic to, like, the way, like, an, an acidity to the way she delivers her lines to him. Lana Del Rey makes music for Monica Bellucci's character in this movie. Just, <laughs> just so you know. Like, that's the epitome of of that that fan base it's like i hate my husband but i'm in i'm in this fucking gangster ass relationship what do i fucking do i put on lana del rey records i feel like like this is a time to mention that the the imdb trivia section for this movie oh is more is so an unhinged like oh i believe it like there's so like there's so much of it that is just clearly people like rushing to add the same thing and yeah. then sometimes there's just stuff that's not even trivia the, the, this is there's a bit about Monica Bellucci in here that just says Monica Bellucci would later go on to star Inspector. Yep. Which she had the small role of Lucia. Yep. Persephone is the wife of the Merovingian. And yeah. Then, like, it's just like that's just telling me that she was in another movie and also what her part is here. Yeah. yeah. That's not trivia. That's most of IMDb trivia. It's like, <laughs> hey, do you know these two actors in this movie also did other movies? <laughs> right. Holy shit. Is your mind blown? She's an actress. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that Monica Bellucci was in other movies? Can I I read you a couple of other things that I I screenshot from I, yeah um there are no less than five or six parts in IMDB trivia where they they mention the fact that Alia was supposed to play shoot what's uh Link's wife's name Z oh uh, was supposed to play her and then she she died you know in 2001 mm-hmm. uh like right before they were before they started filming and so they they recast but one of them <laughs> just lists alia died on august 25th 2001 two weeks later 9 11 happened oh gloria foster God. died on september 29th and i was like what's does that cause and effect I, I love that it's just the wild west on idb's website nobody's <laughs> monitoring shit nobody's moderating anything this last bit is the most insane thing i've ever seen on okay. idb trivia okay the oracle played by gloria foster tells neo that she loves candy <laughs> She sure does. Ironically, the actress died of diabetes. Oh, my God. God. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I tried to keep her from the Oh, my God. Oh, no, no. Somebody's doing that to be funny. That's the most, like, that's the most awful thing I've ever read. It's (laughs) awful, but you know what? It. It's a good joke. I can't. I can't fault him. I can't fault him. Oh, I. I like. I. I was so mad at myself for laughing again. Oh, it's so mean and so. Uh, yeah. Like, why is that on the page? Why is it still up? This movie's twenty years old. It's insane. <laughs> well, let me let me tell you what my 
favorite joke is of this movie, uh -huh. and it's maybe unintentional. But Persephone's is in the bathroom, and they're like, well, well I'll give you what you want, but you got to do something for me. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, oh, the kiss. And she, sa she says the line, she loves you, you love her. It's all over you both. And then they cut to Neo and Trinity, and they are the most stoic and emotionless people. Yeah. It's like you're, they look like a Civil War era photograph where nobody <laughs> knew how to smile. Yeah. And I'm like, how the fuck can you tell that they're in love? <laughs> yeah. It, it, it is, it is like he's, she's, the, the, the implication is that she's told Trinity that he loves her before he has. Yep. Because there's like a, a, like a brief pause that Trinity has. But it, yeah, it is so funny that she's like, you guys are clearly so passionate for each other. And yep. it just cuts to their blank sunglass wearing faces. Yep. It's good. Why does she uh, kill one of those henchmen dudes? And then it doesn't make any sense to me. Kills yeah. him and then says, go bring, <laughs> bring my husband. Also, she implies that he's a werewolf yeah. because she kills him with a silver bullet. She has to. Yeah, because yeah, she says that like she was like they're old programs. Yep. Yeah, they're old programs that like werewolves or something like that. Yeah, like, she said that like and which I did not catch like when I saw the movie initially yeah mm -hmm. but i think it ties in with the video game because there's werewolves in the video game yeah oh, right yeah yeah but even then they still didn't do like uh, they didn't explain it like 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 that is that a knock did we finally find a knock at this movie for uh -oh. <laughs> as i was just like arguing <laughs> no it wasn't <laughs> how how good would it have been if when neo opens the door sees the key maker instead of saying i'm neo he just goes I'm the gatekeeper. <laughs> are you the Are you the gatekeeper? <laughs> I'm just here to do this thing. Sorry, I just watched I just rewatched Ghostbusters and I was, that's one of the best line readings of all time. Never apologize for rewatching Ghostbusters. <laughs> Neo stopping the bullets for the first time. Always cool. I mean, they, he did it in the first movie, but yeah, it's such a you have to be there kind of moment, right? I mean, in, in the in the Merovingians like reaction, just a little eye twitch where he's yeah. like, "Well, shit!" <laughs> like, yeah. You know? Oh, I, I love when the fight's over and he's just like, "God damn it!" Yeah. Oh, that is the best. So the music is like pumping, and he's there's this long drawn out fight sequence, and then it abruptly stops when it cuts to him. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. Yeah. It's really good. I mean, the amount of times they go up the stairs, down the stairs, back up the stairs, yeah. back down again. <laughs> It's it's a great scene. But then, uh, you know, shit's going to go sideways when white dudes with dreads show up because we get the twins. Oh, boy. It's a great characters. Not enough in this movie. Yeah. Unfortunately. Not enough. <laughs> but maybe not. Maybe they're in it just maybe they're in it just enough because they are. I think it's just the right amount. Yeah, maybe. Because they are in theory, they're like unstoppable. And I yeah. think that they're they help ratchet up the tension in this freeway chase, which is <sighs> all in danger of going too long, I think. A little bit. But man, we got to talk about this freeway chase scene because yes. it's. it's it's one of the best set pieces yes. of all time. Yes, I agree. Like it's it, even to this day, like when you do car chase scenes and how on, on highways and movies, mm -hmm. everything is so tight and close because they don't want you to see that they're actually going pretty slowly mm -hmm. and they, they, the cameras doing most of the work. This is so fucking visceral oh because they God. are on a closed freeway. The bits where when Trinity's weaving in and out of the motorcycle, oh. my stomach was doing flip flops yeah. the whole time. So good. The way I mean, they spent this hundred fifty million dollars wisely because this scene is it's one of the best scenes of all time like yeah. it's no car that gets flipped over in this scene can land right side up no. like i don't know if you guys noticed not a nope. single car <laughs> i remember leaving the theater and the image in the movie that stuck with me more than burly brawl or anything else was fucking morpheus yes. turning around yes. with yep. the sword yes. and walking up to the twins yes that, that was my shit yes. like, everybody gets a hero moment yes. in this crew and this is morpheus that is a whole shot and then yes him shooting the car as it's flipping the suv it's so it's, good god damn it this movie is cool as shit that's what i'm saying <laughs> it is a live action <laughs> anime it is. yeah it is when he does his little flip onto the back of the van or onto the back of the truck it's oh so my good god. yeah he gets a jean-claude van damme split moment uh-huh <laughs> Yeah, the stunt work in the wire work is it's no movie is we're never going to get this again. That's yeah. what's unfortunate is we've done it. Yeah. Now, not only did we do it, we did it three times with these movies. I mean, shit, uh, Dr. Octopus has CGI tentacles now because yeah. we can't even make those practical yeah. anymore. Oh, that's a whole different argument, my friend. That is a completely whole different argument. Do you want me for the Spider-Man episode? Because I, <laughs> I mean, if, we, we admit, if it qualifies, we'll do it next season for sure. But like, uh, yeah, no. Uh, like that that is what the matrix does like what the matrix sequels and stuff like that just does just 
I'm just like ecstatic at the fact that like we have like another Matrix movie in, like coming out. Mm-hmm. Like think about it. I, I hope that it's shot like this. I mean, like I I do hope that there are more you know practical considerations for for effects in in that new one. For me, it, it looks just based off the trailers and stuff. It looks like it's going more that modern round of something like Inception or something. Uh-huh. Like mm-hmm. the way they're filming things. I don't think you're gonna get a whole lot of 360 cam bullet time. That's a shame. I mean, you may, but. I could be wrong, but I just just well, my feeling. I ask you this then: what what does that look like in today's standard? Oh, like, I'm sure it looks goofy as shit. <laughs> yeah, but like when the Matrix came out during that time, Bullet Time and all of that stuff, like mm-hmm. I was a sucker for like anything Bullet Time. So like when uh, Jet Li came out with the One and uh-huh. stuff like that, <laughs> or uh-huh. Crouching Tiger, Hitting Dragon. It's the first I'm hearing about this movie, The One. <laughs> <laughs> where where do you where do you go with that? I I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I'm so happy that I, got I like this it. bit. This is a good bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man the, the two trucks colliding into one another oh, watching man. the metal ripple alongside the trucks and them exploding and the neo swooping at the last minute it's it's incredible like yeah. it's it's undeniably one of the coolest fucking things i've ever seen i think an underrated moment of comedy in this movie is the guttural scream when the cops transform yeah when one of them like whips his head towards the camera and just goes, bah! yeah, like it's so good. <laughs> it's like the uh, it's like the de-evolution ray in Mario Brothers. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's the best way to say. <laughs> the one agent that jumps into that car's the roof of the car yeah. and like it smashes and he leaps off. He's like the Hulk. Yes. <laughs> It's so, and also, I also like that Agent Smith in this movie is like in the first movie, he was the threat, yeah. he was terrifying, he was the villain. This movie, he seems kind of more like a, like a nuisance, like yeah. an annoyance. He's an agent of chaos, yeah, yeah he's, he's literally inconvenient. Yeah, I've, I literally <laughs> looked at him as like the character of like. Uh well I have like the storyline but like I I guess I have to fight this guy yeah like yeah I gotta I gotta give it up for uh the agent that fights um Morpheus on top of the truck that's that's Daniel Bernhardt yeah who is like a like a martial artist fucking rules he's, he's in good. John Wick he's in yeah. Logan yeah. Uh, yeah. Birds of Prey I love that guy he's great he, yeah the other agents don't get as much attention as Agent Smith does but he's he's great that's a thing yeah <laughs> that's all right all right if. If we could just get down to it, it's like, all right, so the, the martial arts and just like Reloaded in general, they're really great. Yeah, yeah. no, the fight choreography rules. Yeah. It's, it reminded me of the one, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if y'all gonna do the one, if y'all do an episode on the one, I have to be on that. We might, have, we might have to at this point. It might be inevitable. <laughs> yes. But when we get to this this infinite hallway um, and the key maker's there and the Agent Smith shows up, and they just start fighting in the hallway. And I love that one of the agents has killed them. And I'm like, what have you been trying to do this whole time? Right. right. Like, and uh, when the keymaker opens the door, they all pull out guns. And I'm like, you had guns this whole time? Right. <laughs> Why not start with that? <laughs> But then we get introduced to the architect. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about the architect. I wish I'd been on set the day Keanu did all of his B-roll oh. for like the television screens. <laughs> Good thing you mentioned that. I happen to have oh, it. Oh no, really? Yeah. Do you guys want to watch this now or should we hold off? Oh, <laughs> yes, please. This is behind the scenes video of Neo filming all of the versions of himself in the TV. Oh, is this it? Got, this is a treat. Let's just do it real quick because it's pretty short. <laughs> That's me at work. <laughs> That's his Nick Cage impression. I can say whatever I fucking want. I can say whatever I want. God bless Keanu. Fucking, 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 fucking want. I'll smash this place to bits. The old place. Like, I'll smash this place to bits. I'll smash this place to bits. This. Place to bits. this. <laughs> Don't give Keanu Reeves a line reading. <laughs> I no, I love that he's so on board with these guys. Yeah. He is in. He's he's fully in. Tell Keanu to say whatever. He's gonna fucking like say. I love this part. Fuck you. I love to have to bleep that part. <laughs> uh, incredible. Uh so good. 
Uh, but yeah, I, I just don't know how I feel about the architect. I don't know if it's the actor or if it's the scene in general, but it just this part is where everything just comes to a grinding hole and not oh, it in, drags. Yeah, yeah not in a, <laughs> not in an interesting way. Well, and it feels like it, it feels like this is the one part of the script where it feels like someone flexing to try to sound smart. Yes, like it's a bunch of it's a bunch of like ten dollar words that don't. Really, like, concordingly, um, I have to agree with you, Nathan. Yeah, uh, right, exactly. Mm-hmm. Vis-a-vis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's it's definitely like it's a guy swirling a wine glass, like <laughs> as he's writing the screenplay. But yes, shallow and pedantic. Yes, mm, shallow and pedantic. But no, I, th- <laughs> I mean this thing. This scene, in theory, should be great because mm-hmm. it's the guy who's in charge of the Matrix explaining that the only problem with the Matrix is that people have free will and choice. Mm-hmm. Like that's a heavy fucking thing to wrap your head around, and it's just in this empty void of a room like it doesn't i think they're trying to mirror the 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 empty void room that morpheus and him have when morpheus explains oh by the way the world is over as you know it yeah it it doesn't work as well in this movie well and it also uh, it it really hammers home the idea that the the machines never accounted for someone falling in love Mm -hmm. like that is such a foreign concept to them that it's laughable which makes sense because they're machines yeah no and there's stuff in this scene that i like a lot this is the part of the movie where i feel like keanu is like actually really dialed in Mm -hmm. because he's just he plays annoyed so well in this scene yeah but yeah uh, it it goes on too long for sure and then there's the reveal Mm -hmm. which should be a jaw-dropping moment but i don't feel like it hits the way they intended oh that there's been six yeah he's the sixth one yes yeah and I don't know if they if they planned this all along or whatnot, but I rewatched the first Matrix after watching it this one for the for the episode. Mm-hmm. The first shot of the first Matrix is a couple of numbers on a screen, mm-hmm. and it's the numbers five and six. Oh, interesting. So it's it's pretty cool, like that they had that idea planned, um, or maybe they didn't. They just went back and were yeah. mining the past. But either way pretty great interesting <laughs> then we get the scene of trinity uh we, we didn't even explain what the whole plan is here but they they have to shut down a security grid mm-hmm. uh in the matrix so that they can set off an emp essentially right yeah like that's kind of what we're doing here and trinity has to go in even though she promised neo she wouldn't um because literally one of the teens gets right. entirely sabotaged and murdered that's lee Winnell's whole crew mm-hmm. I, I never get tired of seeing people in the matrix die because their real world counterparts did and they just all kind of slump oh yeah <laughs> It's kind of good. I love the technician or the scientist who comes into the security room and sees all the corpses and is just like, what in the world? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah this the scene with Trinity and fighting the agent is great. Yeah. I mean, they always find new and inventive ways to do fighting. Mm-hmm. I, I never get over her sweeping her leg out from behind her uh, to kick over her head. Yes. It, it's it's great. It's so dope. <laughs> it's so good. This whole fight is so good. Her falling out of the, the building, shooting while they no hesitation dives after her shoe yeah <laughs> it's great and then neo's fisting capabilities are so powerful mm-hmm. that they can bring people back to life yeah he massages that heart yeah do you think he learned that technique from link oh for <laughs> sure i love that the, the shot of him flying and uh you know whipping everything around him the, yes. the like basically bending space around him because he's flying so fast it's great yeah, ne- Neo's god powers are are incredible. It's really cool looking. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he Trinity gets shot. He pulls the bullet out of her. I don't know how this works, but yeah, he goes, "The bullet's still inside." Yeah, I gotta get it. Hold on, and then restarts her. He he kickstarts her heart. Yeah, <laughs> fucking, uh, who's that? Monty Crew. Come on. <laughs> I can't <remember>. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess let me recap the ending here. If you you're a bit fuzzy on uh, the Matrix Reloaded, so sure. at the end of the movie, you know Trinity is saved by Neo. They escape the Matrix. They fire off the EMP in the real world to kill some of the Sentinels. Mm-hmm. And all, all seems right in the world. But there is a reveal that, that Neo, while he was able to rescue Trinity, is in a coma. And someone else is on that slab uh, across from him. Mm-hmm. And this is the weird thing. This is not Hugo Weaving. Yeah. They, it's another actor who I can't remember his name, but he looks a lot like him. But we've, we've seen him a couple of times. Yes. And his He nails Hugo Weaving's mannerisms, too. Oh, in Revolutions. Yeah, it's, it's basically Hugo Weaving on screen. Yeah. It's incredible. <laughs> But no, it's it's the character Bane who we've seen before, which way to give away like the, the the character names in this movie, like if Cypher didn't give it away that he was evil in the last movie, Bane certainly right. <laughs> gives it away in this one. I had a thing about Cypher um in my notes. Okay. I was like, um if Cypher was cast by anybody else, it would be Bill Burr. By Bill Burr. <laughs> 
I like that idea. <laughs> I couldn't help but just like see like him as Bill Burr. I was like, that's Joey Pants and Bill Burr have very similar mannerisms for yeah. sure. You know who was originally <laughs> offered the role of Seraph? Ooh, Jet Li, the oh star of that one. <laughs> <laughs> it all comes back around. Sorry, I interrupted the. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 yeah. that's all. And then that's it. We we cut to black, cut credits, a rock and roll fucking ending. <laughs> but then if, if you stay through the credits, yeah. you get a little treat because um, if you saw this movie in the theaters, they had already filmed Matrix Revolutions, which was mm-hmm. coming out just a few months later. And you get to see a teaser for the next one, which I can't remember another time this has happened. This was the first time I remember staying through the credits to see anything. And uh, I I remember my dad getting progressive. Since, even since then, I don't remember. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I still don't. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Marvel doesn't exist. Yeah. I remember <laughs> my dad getting progressively more annoyed because of the... How long the credits were? The Rage <laughs> song, and then P.O.D., and then he finally gets to the teaser, and he was just like, I don't even think that was worth it. Like, <laughs> no, like, I... I- I miss when like like when all right so when the Matrix Reloaded came out mm-hmm. the Matrix like Revolutions and stuff like that like came out like six months like after yeah like I miss those times I miss like you when you can drop a film like on this day and then like a month couple of months later like you can you can give them like the next chapter and stuff like that like yeah. I miss that. Yeah. It was such a like good time and like and like cinema and you would never ever get that anymore. Probably not. That will never happen. Like that it's not even like a problem. It's like 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 no. It's like that that won't even it won't happen again. I mean, the closest you get is, like Nathan said, the Marvel after credit scenes. But those aren't even trailers for the movie. They're just additional materials. You know what I mean? They did do uh, they did do that for, I think it was at the end of the credits for Captain America, the first Avenger. They had, like, the teaser trailer for the Avengers. Oh, yeah. that's right. You're right. They did do that. But that's the only other time I can really think of it uh, in recent history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My favorite part is it ends with uh, to be concluded, which apparently fucking not. <laughs> yeah, because there's a fourth one coming. <laughs> but that's that's it. That's that's the movie. Um, I do have a, a couple bits of trivia here that I thought would be fun to discuss. But yeah, uh, Roger Ebert's uh, review of this movie. If you haven't read it, please do yourself a favor. But my two favorite lines from his review are the first one. There is something refreshingly iconic about becoming an authority on the transient extrusions of mass culture. And Morpheus now joins Obi-Wan Kenobi as the Plato of our age. Wow. Whoa. I was like, what a sentence. That was a lot. <laughs> And the second is, after Morpheus' speech, the citizens of Zion dance in a percussion-driven frenzy, which is intercut with Neo having sex. And I think their real bodies are having the sex, although you can never be sure. What? What? Was he confused <laughs> that they weren't in the Matrix? I, I think he was confused that Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss were not legitimately having sex on screen. Oh, think, God forbid. I think he thinks they were. <laughs> Which, who knows? Maybe they did. Maybe that was Keanu's dressing room and they just happened to be filming. I don't know. Huh. I, there was another bit of uh, of uh, funny bits of uh, IMDb trivia, Nathan. I don't know if you saw this one, but this one got to me pretty good. Oh, boy. I think this is pretty well known, but Sean Connery was originally picked to play the architect. Oh, yeah. But he turned it down because he couldn't understand the concept of the movie. Mm-hmm. Similarly, he turned down Lord of the Rings because he didn't understand that either. Mm-hmm. The way we found out about this bit of information was he said this in an interview he did for League of Extraordinary, Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yeah, he. I remember this. <laughs> because he said he he only took league because he he thought he's like well i've turned down two major film roles because Mm -hmm. i didn't understand the script Mm -hmm. so i guess the next time i get one that doesn't make sense i'll take it wow that's the issue about will smith movies nowadays yeah we're not this is it. The podcast to do it right now. So <laughs> but I'll just leave it. Yeah. Will Smith is Neo. I don't know. I got some stuff to say. I got a lot to say. About I don't that. know. Do you want to know uh, what the Frenchman was saying when he was like, French is such a beautiful language. Listen to it. Like the swearing. Yeah. It's a string out of, swe- of profanity and it's it translates to goddamn whore, filthy shithouse, jerk bugger of your mother. Of course. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, I think this is pretty great. This is like how you um you really know you've made it in Hollywood when the Wachowski's contract for making this movie in Revolutions was being uh, drafted. Yeah. They put a stipulation in it and said they'll do them, but they wouldn't do any press interviews. Oh, uh, <laughs> like, the dream, right? What a what a dream. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, they were originally set to do Batman Begins, but decided they wanted to do Reloaded and Revolutions instead, which I think turned out, I think that's the right move. I think that was a, a different script, though, because I, I think Batman Begins was like was developed with Nolan. Yeah. Probably. 
Um, and then we were we've been talking about it all episode, but Bill Pope. Yeah, <laughs> this is so good. The DP for this movie and The Matrix, a fantastic, fantastic cinematographer. Absolutely. The only reason he thinks, well, not maybe the only reason, but the main criticism he has of this movie and Revolutions and why they're not as good as the original. Uh, he, he did an interview in 2020 on a podcast where he said uh, the Wachowskis, before they made The Matrix, had read a book by Stanley Kubrick mm-hmm. uh, that said actors don't do natural performances till you wear them out. Out. And so in their mind, they're like, well, let's just do 90 takes of everything about the 90th. T- I mean, this is what Fincher does. <laughs> This is what Hitchcock does. Yeah. Yeesh. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. He said after filming these Matrix movies, he wanted to dig up Stanley Kubrick and kill him again. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. That was the one. I love that. I'm so for that. I love that. Ugh. Yeah. I, I, I kind of agree. You, you can't. I love that. <laughs> Dude, I shoot. I just shoot like local commercials and people be like, oh my God, I had to do it the third time. Yeah. I'm like, man, <laughs> if you don't say that a, a fourth time, Let's go. <laughs> I fucking love that. Before we get into the wrap up segments, is there anything we wanted to talk about that we forgot to talk about regarding the movie itself? Machines. 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love this movie. Yeah. Are, are there are there issues with it? Of course. Mm-hmm. Of course. Not as many issues as you see in the one with Jet Li. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, you know, and you know, hey, laugh all you want, but like, oh, I will. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The one introduced me to Jason Statham, so that's cool. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, but like, I, I just, I, I do love these movies because this came out at around the time that, like, um, yeah, like the one and stuff like that, <laughs> <laughs> and like. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, 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 I'm coming. I'm really for real. Like, like, like the, the, the story and and just like. What's her name? The um the Oracle? Oracle. Yeah, like mm-hmm. they made like a huge thing of like her being this character and then like, you know, God forbid, like the a- the actual actress like passed away and stuff like that. So they had to like recast it and stuff like that. And so there was no it doesn't feel any different. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just like I don't know. When I saw this film, it was just it was just kind of like a I, I really stuck with the with the story mm-hmm. as much as like they went like, you know, outside the box or just like as as like, you know, ridiculous as it was or whatever. It's just like, I don't know. I, I had a lot of fun with this film. This 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 entire like trilogy in in itself. It was it was cool. I, I had a lot of fun doing this rewatch. Like I forgot how crazy good this movie is. Like, is it as good as the first one? No, no. But it's its own thing it's it's not even comparable which is silly because it's literally a sequel but it's a different thing in the third movie for all its flaws it's also its own thing like they're all distinct which is kind of crazy considering how specific the matrix is and it's yeah. aesthetics and everything yeah yeah all right this part my favorite part of the show but we're going to talk about uh, our first of many segments here mm-hmm. prop cop so for new listeners, Prop Cup is where we look at all the props or tangible items in the Matrix Reloaded, mm-hmm. and we we pick one for ourselves that we we get to take outside the Matrix into the real world and keep for ourselves. So, mm-hmm. John, you're our guest on the episode. You get first pick. What is one prop from the Matrix Reloaded that you want for yourself? I write it down. I wrote it down. <laughs> I wrote it down. <laughs> what I would want from the Matrix Reloaded... <laughs> Prop wise, mm-hmm. I want the glasses, man. Okay. I want, I want, uh, I want, I want, uh, Agent Smith glasses. Okay. Hell yeah. Give me the glasses. Those are probably some expensive ass glasses. Yeah. So that's a good, that's a good, that's a good take. Give me the glasses. Nathan, what about you? I want that cake that makes you come in your pants. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if that's the case, I don't want you anywhere near the prop I'm picking, which is I'm picking the iconic red chair. Yeah. Uh, Morpheus oh. Nice. Like you can't, that's, it, it's one of the great props of cinema history. It's it is. the chair. Like, sure. Yeah. I'm sorry, but like, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, he's, he's got a point. No, for sure. He's got a point. <laughs> that like crushed me. <laughs> okay. Well, how about this uh, first segment bit part? Now this is 
so easy for this movie because mm-hmm. there's so many extras in this movie. So yeah. many unnamed characters, characters that don't have any lines. Uh, this is where we draft ourselves in that, that role. We take away that character's acting credit and we put ourselves in the movie. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So, Nathan, how about you? Who is the actor that you want to replace? What's the character? What's the role you want to replace? Uh, so, there, during the rave, there's the bit where uh, Trinity shows up and Neo is like, Ta- there's a guy that's talking to neo and neo is clearly looking past him and then just goes excuse me and then yeah. walks away <laughs> i want to be the guy that just gets like the chef okay okay i know, okay. About, I, know you're talking I thought for sure nathan you were going to say you want to be the guy with the dreads that whips the sweat all over everybody <laughs> uh, i thought about it i thought about it i'm gonna go with it's one of my favorite scenes in the movie it's mm-hmm. the first scene in the movie with trinity and uh the, all the security guys the motorcycle mm-hmm. <laughs> you're on that shift yeah oh i want to be the guy in the security Security office that gets left in there, which he drops a fucking motorcycle <laughs> on him, and it explodes like it's a good death. Like like you put C four in the building. Yeah. I don't know why this <laughs> hut explodes to this level. Yeah. <laughs> uh, John, what about you? Bit part. I want to be. All right, I have. All right, I have two things here. The first thing I have on here is I would love to just be the um, the pole that uh, Neo flings around. <laughs> We got a we got an ADR John into the movie as the pole. Like, <laughs> I think that's the first time we've ever combined bit part and prop, prop cop. cop. That's yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah. Notes. I write notes. <laughs> but like, yeah, no. Like, I want to be either the pole or like the sound effect of it, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. or <laughs> just. <laughs> Look, yeah okay all right cool <laughs> or i want to be uh and i wrote this verbatim whatever key the key master <laughs> uses to open the um the the door that like he opens that like that like all the agent smiths are uh-huh. trying to like run into and stuff <laughs> You want to be the door, or you want to be the key? I want to be the. <laughs> I want to be the key. Wait a minute, I'm confused. <laughs> no, I like you know. I like this. I like that John is taking it. this this segment to a whole different direction. I'll allow it. You know, I take it back. I want to be the motorcycle that uh, Trinity <laughs> rides and then explodes. Okay, that, that kills my character. Yeah, okay, that's right. I like that. I, I, you, what if it should have been whoever's driving the car where the agent jumped onto the hood of it? Oh my and gosh! Bounces off? Yeah. Like, how do you explain that to your insurance? Like, what do yeah. you do? <laughs> yeah. And see, that's the kind of, like, level that I'd be taking it on. I'd be like, all right, hold on. So LeBron just comes out of nowhere with Buzz Bunny, <laughs> and they both, like, smash your Ikea? All yeah. right, cool. I'm just kidding. All right. Well, the entire point of the show is we're trying to find something good to say mm-hmm. for the characters at the end of the movie. So now let's get to the, uh, the piece de resistance silver lining. So... Mally's not here, but he did do his work and gave us one Mm -hmm. to mention here on the air. So I think we need to to honor his memory. Sure. And uh, mention his silver lining here, which is actually not a bad one. Trinity made it through her first time driving on the freeway, (laughs) which I think (laughs) is a great silver lining because that is a moment. That is good. Where she's like, you told me never go on the freeway. You said it was suicide. Mm -hmm. (laughs) John, you and I have a mutual friend that I think almost said that verbatim to us. I didn't realize it was a quote from this movie, but... Casey uh, said that to me once before. She's like, I don't drive on the freeway. It's suicide. I'm like, hmm. I, wonder, I don't know if you'd be a fan of the Matrix, but that's pretty funny. <laughs> Why is the Matrix a representation of Columbus Highway? <laughs> <laughs> have you driven on it? It's it's pretty oh, dangerous, too. I 85. <laughs> oh, don't drive on it. <laughs> All right. Well, Nathan, what's your silver lining for the Matrix Reloaded? Um, In a weird way, Neo is free. Like, he's not bound by the expectation of this prophecy and can kind of try to find his own path now mm. if we're just if we're just ignoring the next movie you I know like what that. i mean if just just taking taking the this ending on its own terms yes that's a good point whenever we do silver linings we try to make sure it's within the constraints of this movie as an individual film mm-hmm. okay well if you want to go do that then okay well all right so in these films like in the <laughs> In the Matrix movies and stuff like that, like mm-hmm. I really do love these movies. Like I love, <laughs> like, like I'm not just on here to talk shit. No, 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 no. Like, like everything down to just like, like, like you watch. We're watching them now. Like watch the, watch the, 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 the um, the cinematography of it. Mm. Like watch like the, the green tint. There's a lot of intent in these movies. When you talk about creativity and stuff like that, like 
it introduced like the bullet time and stuff like that. It yeah. introduced like these these movies like introduced like a lot of stuff. Like, yo, we can laugh and joke about that and stuff like that. And, like now, but it's just like like I mean like I'm watching like scenes like right now as we like record and it's just kind of like it's like next level. Yeah. It's very much like next level. Like and like on some like very much like realistic like yeah mm -hmm. like filmmaking like kind of shit. Like this mm -hmm. is very. This touches on like a, a on like a lot of different levels and stuff like that. That 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 like I very much like appreciate and stuff like that. Could you imagine the people? There's the famous story of the people that saw the very short film, one of the very first films ever made, train arriving at the station, <laughs> and how they all ran out of the theater because they thought the train was going to come out of the screen and run them over in the fucking movie theater. Right? <laughs> Seems silly nowadays, but it was literally magic back then. Like yeah. it was how the fuck are they doing this kind of thing could you imagine have like the people that saw that movie like oh thank god it's it's just a movie it's not real like it's it's just an image on a screen going from that and they walk into the theater next time and the fucking freeway chase scene <laughs> is <laughs> <laughs> you would kill all those people they'd have heart attacks like right there in the theater i mean like i don't it, man I, I i don't know it's just like like the like i said like the the choke hold that like the these effects like had on us back then yeah it's just like next level it's such next level yeah nothing nothing's come close nothing's really come close since then. yeah until like the new spider-man movies that's coming out mm -hmm. like and the only reason why i brought that up is because like i saw the episode of like you guys like talking about spider-man 2 and just like like well the only thing that i would like the negative i would have about those films is just the fact that like they rely way too heavy and what like marvel movies nowadays do too they they rely heavily on like cgi and like yeah. they rely way too much like heavily on that that kind of stuff and then like you watch like what we're watching right now the matrix reloaded and stuff like that like yeah there's like cgi and stuff like that but like it was a it was just a different like era back then they were using it like differently back then Whereas like now, I just feel like they just rely on it. It's just like, oh, we can, we just shoot that for this blah blah blah, and it just, yeah. yeah. I mean, the fact that none of them are wearing suits in Endgame, and they're all just digital creations added onto them. It's yeah. like, what are we? Yeah, you can do it, but why? Like, why? Why not go for it? Like, I just rewatched the original movie, The Thing, and then I watched the prequel right after, and I love both of those movies, but. I mean, we always talk about this. We want practical effects. We want practical effects. This movie is a lot of practical effects. It's yes, all wire work and everything. So it's camera much. work. But, well, it's CG that's needed when it's needed. Mm -hmm. It's not, like I said, when you start introducing fully synthetic characters on screen and people are just looking at nothing, it's, it's rough. It's really hard. They just rely too much, like, on, like, the actual action of, like, what's going on. Like, in the Merovingian, like, fight and stuff like that. Like, say... Yeah, we'll shoot this like in real time and, and like, you know, like live action and stuff like that. But like, we don't want to shoot like spoilers. We don't want to spoil anybody. So like, we'll just shoot the rest of the scene in CGI and yeah. stuff like that. It's just like, I don't, it's weird. Like, we're never going to see another Helm's Deep battle. No, no. I don't think we're ever going to see something on that level again, yeah. which is unfortunate. Because these late 90s and early 2000s, like, there was something in the water because you get Fight Club, you get The Matrix, you get yeah. Lord of the Rings, so many fucking, and movies that were blowing people's minds, like, Fight Club had the same kind of effect this movie did, mm -hmm. this movie just did it bigger. Mm -hmm. That's really the only difference. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate we won't really get, I mean, we get great movies still. Mm -hmm. We do. Don't get me wrong, there's still amazing movies getting made, but not... To this skill set with this kind of revolutionary filmmaking techniques like what what's the last great like inception maybe mm. what's the last great what like the last big tent pole like redefining like cinema and, and cinematography and effects and stuff. like that's the last thing i can think of like inception when the city rolls up like while they're in it mm -hmm. like in the dream like that was the last big moment i remember being like in the brahms and everything like that movie well hold on well all right let's think about this though like we're in post pandemic. No, we're not. <laughs> Whoa. Current pandemic. <laughs> Current. Well, no, no, we're not. We're like, it's... no, we're just moving to the next version of the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, we we're in V two of it. V <laughs> two. <laughs> but like, I guess like that's what I I guess uh, what I was asking. Just like, are we at that point now? In terms of like film, I mean, something will come along. I know James Cameron thinks it's going to be his Avatar movies. It's probably not. No, it's no. not. <laughs> but something will come along. It's just we're in a we're in a drought right now of, of stuff. I feel like. Yeah. 
But back, <laughs> we never finished silver linings. So. No. <laughs> we got a very depressing. Just <laughs> I, I, I was well. I thought the silver lining was these movies exist. Yeah. No, John's silver lining we is just this got movie's very great. Depressed. Yeah. <laughs> my, my silver lining is yeah. If if we ignore what happens in revolutions because we look at this film as its own individual thing. Mm -hmm. If anything, I think the way Neo just manhandles fucking Agent Smith in this movie in the Matrix, it's going to be incredibly easier to destroy him in the real world, right? Because yeah. He's a computer program that has no concept of the real world, like what it's what a human body feels like. It's the opposite of the cipher scene from the first movie, with yeah. like I know what this steak tastes like, I but I know it's fake. Yeah. Mm. When Agent Smith gets out, he's not gonna. He's, it's gonna be like Uma Thurman and Kill Bill trying to get out of the hospital bed. He, he's not gonna know how his <laughs> legs work. Like, <laughs> Neo's gonna be basically beating a cripple. That's all this <laughs> next movie would be. <laughs> and Neo can manipulate things in the real world. Mm -hmm. So like it's he's gonna get his ass whipped. You would think, <laughs> wouldn't you? Yeah. That's my silver lining. Uh, John, did we uh, uh, effectively cover yours? Because I feel like we got lost along the way discussing. I don't have a silver. I don't. I don't think I have a silver lining. That's okay. the thing. Like that's fine. I don't know if I have one. Like like I I have more like uh like I want to <laughs> like I want to uh fight about this film i want to argue <laughs> about like why i love this movie so you're you're the you're the lisa simpson meme just on stage saying yeah. the matrix sequels are great like, yeah <laughs> like i want to be that guy i want to be that person that's like no i love these movies uh, you know what this is this as long as i've known you this has been like you you never faltered on this so i can i can vouch for you and say you've always been like no, the Matrix sequels are great. That's one thing I can definitely say. And I I kind of respect that because yeah. there's not a lot of people that have those kind of hills to die on. Right. Hills to die. You're, you're 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 the guy. No, not not even in a negative way. Like right, you're, right. you're the guy defending it. Like I think the thing 2011 is just as good uh, or if not equal to the John Carpenter one and I know I'm in the minority with that. I don't know, like I just I, I we all are familiar with the Matrix films, like the like yeah, they're great, they're and stuff like that and stuff like that. But like what? <laughs> I'm familiar with a movie called The One. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> By the way, if they ever make a sequel to that movie, would it just be called The Two? Yeah, I don't know, but they need to cast me in it. Or would it be, would it be called The One Two? The old, the old One Two. <laughs> the One Two Punch. That's what they call. It. That's good. <laughs> the One Comma T, -T O O <laughs> T O O The One T O O. Uh, the Oracle still likes candy. If y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. All right. I, I I, think we did it. I tell you what. Let's say our silver linings weren't adequate enough for the listener. <laughs> and they're like, guys, oh, you, you left me hanging here. I don't have, like, I don't like No, that's this. okay. No, no. You can redeem yourself in this next segment we're doing. Silver lining implies that, like, I had, an, I feel like it implies that, like, I had an issue with the last film. And, like, I don't. Okay. No, that's fine. You interpret, you I mean, you interpret a bit part in an entirely different way than we anticipated. So, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. I, I like it. I, I like that the fact that you see this movie and you don't see it as needing a silver lining. That's kind of a silver lining in and of itself. Like, mm -hmm. you're that's a more meta version of it. There's parts of it, but like, whenever everybody was talking shit about this film, like, oh, this movie is so fucking bad. It's like, it's not really it's to me. I I don't know. Like I, yeah. it wasn't that crazy. I I think it suffers from the fact the first one is a perfect movie, and it's like how do you follow up on that? Yeah, it's it's an impossible task they set before themselves. I think they did. I, Nathan and Mally and I were talking about this a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about this movie. It's like I think they did as good of a job as you could possibly get in terms of making a sequel to The Matrix. Like right. what did, what did people? Ex what more could you want? Yeah, is my my question. Yeah, like it's it's an impossible. Task you can't if, if there's a perfect movie and you have to you're making a sequel to it it's inevitable that it's not going to be as good as the first one like you know there's very 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 few times where the sequel is better than the original right it's like terminator 2 but the terminator 1 is still really fucking good right aliens alien it's still really fucking good like it's, for sure it's it's difficult to do jingo all the way yeah i love aliens 2 more than jingo all the way yeah i'm just kidding wow but, but, i'm just kidding i'm just kidding i'm just kidding i can't even go along with this bit anymore just <laughs> kidding guys just kidding all right well let's say this let's say our silver linings weren't enough for the listener that's where <laughs> enough. it's not enough we're gonna do the pick me up movie alternative okay also known as the double feature okay so listener if you're new to this concept this is basically where we pitch you a way to do a double feature with the matrix reloaded where you watch another movie right after to uh to make it a great night for yourself and even things out so Let's say this. I'll go ahead and go first to give you an example. Yeah. So if The Matrix Reloaded left you on like a, a shocker of a cliffhanger with the Agent Smith reveal and you're like, guys, I, I need something else 
I'm going to go with one of my favorite movies mm. of all. Like, put it this way. I had a, you know, letterbox. You can put your top four favorite movies. Yeah. yeah. I did a re reevaluation of mine recently where I realized I've been lying to myself this whole time mm. where there's a movie that I love so much and I needed it to be in my top four on letterbox. And I just wouldn't, I didn't do it for some reason. I was like, guys, I, I'm, I'm a fraud if I don't <laughs> put it in there, but it is there now. And that movie, if you want more Keanu, you got to go with my favorite action movie of all time, which is speed. Oh, oh hell yeah. my God. <laughs> <laughs> you built that up so much. Dude, <laughs> you mentioned, you mentioned speed a lot on this season. Like, yeah. I, I feel like you went through like a renaissance with it. I'm not kidding. I'm not exaggerating. I watched speed three times in two days, like Holy a month ago. Shit, dude. <laughs> I'm overdue for a rewatch. I'll check it out. I love, I, I think it's better than Die Hard and everyone else could suck it if you disagree with me. I think they're <laughs> very different feel. movies. But it's Die Hard on a bus. I mean, it was the same, the DP mm, from right, Die Hard. Right. Making I think, <laughs> what's the Keanu Reeves movie? Hardball. <laughs> John Wick. The surfing one. Johnny Mnemonic. No, not that one. Keanu, where he's the cat. <laughs> no, he's surfing. Surfing. This is a fun game. Guys. Bram Stoker's Dracula. <laughs> Point Break. Yes. Oh, point break. I was about to say, yeah, point break. Hey, guys, come on. <laughs> yeah, come on. You, you didn't give us much to go on. You said that other well, Keanu. I was asking. <laughs> I was literally just asking. I was going to go down his roster. But yeah. I think that's, <laughs> that is a great um, starting off point, though. Point break? Yeah. Yes. That's a great, that's a great movie. Point break is, is a fucking brilliant fucking movie. It's very fun. Is that your, your double feature pick? No, it's not. It's not. Okay. I got, you know, like I in my list here, like I got everything but that one. One. okay do you want nathan to go ahead and go so you can think of one in the meantime yeah yeah all right yeah. nathan what do you got yeah um if you enjoyed the infiltration of a high-rise building in this movie and want more action and slow motion oh, i would boy. recommend 2012's dread uh -huh. mm. the movie slaps yeah what a slept on movie yeah and it's it's the i i love that movie because it's the only action movie i can think of where that had the balls to make slow motion into a plot device yeah yeah dread yeah. yeah carl urban just busting ass because i'm thinking about drive me to hell oh no 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 dread the uh the judge dread remake that carl urban did what was it 2012 you said yeah i think so mm. yeah it's a great movie very slept on what about what about you john do you have, do you have uh, a double feature in mind now uh no, I'm not, not, not ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll tell you what. We'll go, we'll go into to the rest of the stuff, and you can think about it on the way. And yes. If you don't have one, again, that's fine. I got an obvious question here that I know I'm going to get a response from, from you, John, real quick. But uh, do we recommend The Matrix Reloaded? Yes. Yeah, I, I knew it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, yes. Yes. I think, uh, I think it's a, yeah, it's, I would even recommend watching the first and second one back to back. Yes. I mean, I feel like they, they, they actually really benefit each other in, in interesting ways. Yeah. And they expand the story in like a lot of different like ways too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, I've already kind of talked about it, but I, I think given how successful, trend-setting, and innovative the first Matrix movie was, mm -hmm. this is the best possible sequel we could have gotten. Yeah. And it was an impossible standard that was set, but I think the Wachowskis did a great job with this trilogy. I think they put their hearts and souls into these movies and their blood and their sweat and their tears, and I think it shows on screen. Like, this movie... Whether you like it as much or not mm -hmm. as the first movie, it's undeniable. Like it's in your face to the bet for the best reason. It's like every little shot. Yes. Like every like I'm watching it now, like it was speak. It's just like every little little shot. It's just like what the Agent Smith like coming in and stuff like that. It's just like it, it's just we started this podcast just like talking about like the the trailers and stuff like that like everything like even down to just like the small stuff like just like how, how the trailers are like edited and stuff like that it's mm -hmm. just this entire just like not only just film but it's just like just a, as it in general it's just like they just did all the right things with it i agree i think it's uh it's a phenomenal movie i think it's it's worthy of being in the conversation of some of the great action movies of the odds and i i think it's visually glorious mm -hmm. like it's jaw dropping it's stunning it's it's just as good as the first one i mean i've already said it before and I, there's not much more i can say about it but the, i i think you do yourself a disservice if you discount this movie just because you think it's not as it's not up to snuff as the first one all right well 
If you have your own thoughts about the Matrix Reloaded and you'd like to get them heard, you can email us or DM us on social media. Uh, that email is the Silver Linings Playlist at gmail.com. And we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, we're also on Reddit at reddit.com slash r slash Silver Linings Playlist. You can recommend a movie that you'd like us to do on the show. Uh, give us some feedback on how we're doing. And of course, we ask that you do the usual podcast roundup of subscribe, rate, and leave some feedback. And the best thing you can do for the show is tell your friends and family about us mm -hmm. to, to get them on board. Because we have one final movie for the season. I, I can't believe it. Another season almost over. Season five is going out with a bang. Um, and Nathan, you have a clue for us, I believe. Yes. For what we're going to talk about in our season five finale. <laughs> 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 that was so great that was so great i love that so much. Go, go ahead nathan next week the season has to come to an end because nobody trusts anybody now yeah and we're all very tired yeah and i have to say after such a long season it would be nice to just you know wait around for a little while yeah see what happens <laughs> boom, boom. Boom, boom. So excited. Oh, I can't wait for next week. I'm so hyped. John, I don't mean to put you back on the spot, but have you, have you thought about a double feature that you think would pair well with this movie? Um, and if not, it's okay. Well, I, I want to know, what do you think? Because, all right, all right, I, I'll give you this. All right, so, like, what, where, where were y'all when this movie came out and, and uh, they gave y'all that cliffhanger and that you didn't even understand? I was going to say, I didn't understand. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, <laughs> where were you? When that cliffhanger hit and you were like, uh, what happened? And yeah. then before you even happened, like all you hear I was is in the just... theater. Yeah. <laughs> Same. I, 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 I'll tell you what I'll tell you what I remember. Uh -huh. I remember not knowing what happened, but knewing it was a cliffhanger and it was important because yeah. the music was telling me the final shot wasn't of Neo, it was of this random guy that I didn't recognize. Because well, you saw him you see him earlier in the movie yeah, yeah. getting possessed, yes. but I swear the first time I watched this movie, I didn't remember that character when it yep. got back to the ending. Yeah. Yep. I just assumed it was Agent Smith because yeah. it kind of looks like Hugo Weaving. I did the same thing. But I didn't understand. I mean, I was 13 when this movie came out. I don't uh, think yeah. I understood the implications of what that meant for the movie, for the next movie. Right, you know what I mean? right. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I would say if you need help, John, I think the obvious answer, <laughs> if you want to double feature, is just finish it out and go into the next one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, for real, like if you end on this movie and you see this cliffhanger, you got, I mean, wouldn't you instinctively be like, well, what happens next? Right. I got to know what happens next. Well, that was, that was, that was me though that yeah. was a teenage version of, that was me yeah. i was like oh shit like yeah like i want to see the rest of this or or if you just truly want to get away from this franchise and just want something else <laughs> why not get more Lawrence fishburne and more keanu and just go watch like john wick chapter two or chapter three i was about to say well why why get that when i can easily just get the the one mm. like, yeah i could just easily just watch that or the one there you go that's that's the obvious answer how do we not think about this <laughs> of yeah course. john's double feature is the one like it's clear my double feature is uh uh, is death proof <laughs> <laughs> that's a great movie too vastly underrated yeah well is there anything else that we wanted to talk about before we end the episode on the matrix reloaded before we unplug i feel like we nailed it i think we did too john i can't believe it finally <laughs> this was a blast dude we're on 129 and that's how long it took to get you on the show <laughs> i i just went back because i had to catalog some stuff and on the smoking aces episode which is like episode nine we tried calling you because i knew how much you loved that movie to get your thoughts on it and you didn't answer the phone oh, shit. so this miss. is how long this has been in the making yeah like 120 episodes later smoking aces yeah we tried uh, that's i i need two hours of that what? one i don't think the episode was two hours long so we could have used it for that sorry it was gonna be my that's all right <laughs> just kidding well look john do you have anything that you are working on or anything that you want to plug before we get out of here currently not right now okay um my dog's birthday is today Hell oh yeah. yeah happy birthday Django! yay <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, yeah, no, we just chilling. Right on. Well, 
if we do another Matrix movie or, or if we ever do the one, we'll, we'll have you back on. Hey, if y'all <laughs> do the next Matrix movie, mm-hmm. I, can I just like, I don't want to put pressure, but I, I, I feel like I need to be on that. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you do, too. I, I, I don't even have to take a group vote on it. I think we're, we're all in agreement. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> no, this is great. This this is great. This was great. I agree. This was a great episode. And no, nah, man, all these past episodes have been bangers. But man, as much as I enjoyed this episode, I cannot wait for next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here's the thing, Nathan, the listeners don't know is this has kind of been planned yeah. all along and nobody even recognized it that we had it. We already kind of spoiled what we're doing next week multiple times that's right nobody's picked up on it yeah yeah it's gonna be a fun season finale so tune in to that you won't want to miss it i'm really excited i'm looking at your emails right now what do you mean uh- <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> well rest in peace oatmeal and i guess we got to say it because she was such a powerhouse performance in this movie rest in peace gloria foster yeah 100 percent. yeah and uh as always Where's my pussy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had to do it. Uh, Good. <laughs> Excelsior. 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 Oh. Look it up. my hello youtube if you've made it this far thanks could you do us one more favor could you hit those like and subscribe buttons maybe leave us a comment on what you think of the show we'd really appreciate it join us again next week for an all-new episode bye